Mr. Ong Teng Khun. Sir, the move to impose GST on imported digital services is a step in the right direction. However, it raises a number of important questions. Digital services are becoming an increasingly central part of our lives. We, we all use mobile apps multiple times a day. From games to health tracking to stock market information services, we hardly even notice them anymore. For just mobile apps alone, the market is estimated to be 77 billion US dollars globally in 2017 and poised to grow to 200 billion dollars in 2020. When you add up all the value of all the digital services, including software, entertainment, online learning and search engines, the total value is mind-boggling. At one level, the imposition of GST on overseas providers is a simple matter of leveling the playing field. Currently, Singapore-based providers are at a disadvantage. This is because they have to charge GST while their overseas counterparts do not have to. This is an issue especially for consumers. They may decide to abandon local providers for foreign ones in pursuit of what they deem to be a 7% discount. For businesses, most businesses can claim back GST. However, many small businesses may not be registered and hence behave essentially like consumers. So the idea, while bold, is fundamentally sound, but the relative novel nature raises a number of critical questions. First, how do we ensure even an effective implementation of this regime? The threshold for overseas vendor registration, OVR, is $1 million global revenues and $100,000 of Singapore revenues. The $1 million global revenue threshold is very low. The implication is that many small companies will be liable under our regime. In particular, I'm concerned about small marketplaces. Marketplaces exist to match buyers and sellers. Their actual revenues may only be a small fraction of the turnover on their site. Will the ministry review this threshold and adjust it if it is found to create problems? And if not, will there be a mechanism to review it periodically and adjust it when expedient? The next question has to do with efficiency of the new tax. How much revenue does the government expect to raise through this tax? We all know that spending on digital services is growing rapidly, but how much of that will fall under this regime? And how much taxes will be generated for our national coffers? More importantly, what is the cost of monitoring and enforcing compliance? The tax regime will be global. Does IRAS and other relevant authorities have the capabilities and the capacity? Digital service startups are proliferating, with thousands appearing every day. There could be potentially millions of small GST payers all around the globe. Can IRAS cope? How will we inform all the affected companies and marketplaces about their liabilities under our GST regime? How will we monitor that all relevant vendors are complying with this regime? And how will we enforce penalties for non-compliance given that they have no presence in Singapore? Is there a risk that service providers may thumb their noses at Singapore and they basically say to IRAS, catch me if you can? A global tax regime of this nature is likely to be complex. Will the revenue raise justify the expenditure on monitoring, collecting and enforcing the tax? A related question is on providers abandoning Singapore. Would active enforcement result in some companies simply deciding not to serve Singapore-based consumers? Small and innovative overseas startups may not be willing to invest in the cost of compliance. They may simply decide not to serve a small market like Singapore. This could potentially deprive local companies and consumers of cutting-edge technology. Under the new rules, overseas vendors are required to obtain and maintain at least two pieces of non-conflicting evidence of customers' location, payment proxy, residence proxy, and access proxy. It is easy to imagine seller companies saying, forget it, Singapore companies are just not worth all this trouble. The general data protection regulation in the EU was seen as onerous. There were stories of businesses that simply turned away EU customers when GDPR was introduced. They felt that compliance was just too cumbersome, and that was for a market for 500 million people. One possible consequence is that Singapore-based customers may resort to evasion tactics. They could use VPNs 
online credit cards and overseas, overseas PO boxes in order to be able to access these services. This opens them to the risk of penalties. The regime states that non-GST registered customers should not provide incorrect or false information to overseas vendors. According to IRAS, customer misrepresentation is a serious offence and offenders may face heavy penalties. What penalties are envisaged and how will they be enforced? Unlike people bringing in undeclared goods, there will not be any physical evidence to rely on. The final question is a familiar one on the impact of such a tax on some consumers. If we are optimists, we could argue that this broadens the tax base and makes our tax regime more progressive by generating revenue from overseas companies. This will free up additional resources for beneficial programs. We can reduce other taxes that disproportionately burden lower income groups that are already under stress. However, there is a potential dark side to such a tax. There is increasing concern about a digital divide. Lower income groups are going to be disadvantaged because they lack exposure to the digital world. Some digital services may also act as more affordable substitutes for physical services. For example, online learning and education and even online entertainment. The imposition of GST on such imported digital services could reduce their consumption. It could price children from lower income families out of digital experiences. And such experiences are critical to survive and to thrive in the world of Industry 4.0. Will the government consider some form of digital GST rebates, particularly for virtuous digital services such as online learning and online education? In conclusion, the move to impose GST on imported services is a step in the right direction. As Singapore prepares itself for the new digital economy, I would like to applaud the government for having the vision and the courage to undertake this bold initiative. I support the bill.